Oh, glory to God. Today is magnificent mountain moving, and I'm glad to see you Monday. Where have you been? My goodness, I've been watching for you. I've been looking for you, and now I found you, and I thank God you're with me today. Well, we are going to take a journey into the story of a woman that got an answer from an impossible situation, and your faith may be on a test line right now. It may be up against a wall. Your faith may be put to the test to see if you have the conviction, the commitment, and the carry through to do what it takes to accomplish what God calls you to. Let's pray together. I want you to take the greatest dream vision before God that is in your heart, and let's thank God for it. Father, we thank you that there is not one dream, vision, or purpose that's given that is withheld from our lives. The souls of men, the breakthroughs in mind, the healing in body, and the finances of this world belong to the children of God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, let's start in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. It says, And Jesus spoke a parable unto them, saying that men ought always to pray and not faint. Don't faint. How many things have you had as a prayer conviction in your past and you dropped it through the ground? You let it go. You said the process, the conflicts, the issues were too much. That men ought to pray and not faint. And then he gives an illustration of how it works. He says there was a city, a judge, which he didn't fear God, didn't regard men. And there was a widow in the city, and she came and said to him, Avenge me of my adversary. He wouldn't do it for a while. He's like, I could care less about you, woman. You can go ahead and fix it yourself. But afterward, he said within, my, within himself, listen to what he said. Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Now, let's look at the analysis of what Jesus used as a story in the statement, men ought always to pray and not faint. He used a story of the judge that did not want to answer, the environment that was hostile to her, the circumstances that were impossible for her, but she had something, she had a conviction, she had a commitment, and she had a carry through. It didn't matter what it took. It didn't matter how long it took. It only mattered that she was coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And is your faith like that door that's being knocked on, like that rock that gets broken by the hammer of the word? Because my word is a hammer and breaks the rock in pieces. Are you the convicted? Are you the committed? And are you the carry through person? Sometimes we become frustrated with the circumstances and we find ourselves being weary and well-doing. Well, I charge you today to get up and get on with what you are called to and do not be weary and well-doing for God is going to reward you. He is doing it. For the day is now upon you, saith the Spirit of the Lord, that your eyes shall behold the future and the natural shall become an adversary to you. But for your foresight, you shall have insight into the kingdom of God within you and the power to conquer everything that withstands you. So fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I'll uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. So let no fear befall you. Wow. What a tongue and interpretation, an exhortation of God saying, stand in the fray, stay in the fight. Do not back down. Do not get weary. It's time for you to win every battle and conflict you face in life. Then Jesus says in verse 8, 
I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith? Will he find men and women that have such radical, absolute, sell-out conviction that regardless of odds and conflict, they are going to prevail? I'm speaking right now to some of you that have been weary, that have been disenfranchised, that have been peripheral. I'm speaking to some of you that have been wondering, should I continue? I mean, I feel like I fought so long and I'm commanding you, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the conviction that is in you move you forward to the high calling of God that is before you. God spoke in a prophetic utterance today to you that he's given you eyes to see the future. The future is established. It's done. Whence God says it, it's finished. Now, when we walk it out, we face the natural, the circumstantial. We face the people that are adversarial. We face the timelines that seem insurmountable, but most of all, we face our God and we say, God, you are well able to perfect that which concerns me. And I charge you today, let's shake off the bands of heaviness. Let's loose that yoke of oppression and let's break every sense of discouragement that's tried to weigh upon your life. And let's pray. Father, I thank you for your men and women. They have been called, they have been anointed, and they are sent to do a work that is a work of God. It shall not fail, neither shall it falter. For you are the God that orders our steps. We make our plans, Father, but you order our steps. And I speak strength into the inner man. I speak strength into the inner man. I speak sobriety and mental acuity into the mind. I speak virility and authority and healing into your body. For the work that is before you is great. But the laborers, as Jesus said, are few. So you also need to pray the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into his harvest. Because you see, your visions and dreams are carried out by not only you. They're carried out by those that come alongside you. I pray God adds men and women of faith with you. I pray God removes men that are wicked and unreasonable, for not all men have faith. I pray you get delivered from those that are obstructionist and resisting to the verses and the purpose of God in your life. You see, this is a day of miracles. And one of the miracles that I read on Sunday, and this stir scripture stirred me up. In Amos chapter 9, verse 13, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that sows seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. And this is your God. Your God is blessing you with supernatural breakthroughs. And the key to it is the seed that you sow, the actions you take. And so as we come to the conclusion of this magnificent, awesome Monday, I'm glad to be back with you. I want to ask you to make a commitment to the Lord. And so right now, I just signed a contract to have a major light revision in our auditorium so that we go completely digital. We're going to abandon all analog lighting and go completely digital so we can control our lighting facilities accurately in today's technology. You know, you have one of these phones and there was a time for many of you 
You remember, the only phone that existed was connected to a cord in a house. But you had to do something. You had to get an upgrade. You had to make a decision to go forward and accomplish something that you've already paid for your other phone. You have a phone bill, but now there's a cell phone. New technology requires new money. And I want to thank you for your seed specifically. There's an area called technology upgrade on our offering envelopes and our online area. And so I'm back. Technology upgrades back because we're moving forward to accomplish the vision and dreams that God's called us to. So I just want to challenge you and charge you today to make a confession that what I begin, I finish. What I set out to do, I accomplish in the name of Jesus. And that every obstacle, I break its power. Every resistance, I remove its influence. Every tormentor, I command it bound and rebuked. And you make that conviction in your commitment and confession today, and you'll begin to see these things that God has spoken to you to just come to pass over and over and over again. If you're with us on Sunday, you heard a short testimony. And I just want to give it in these last few seconds in our time. My brother was in a weakened state in his life, and he was convinced to be signed off as a DNR, and that's do not resuscitate, in a state of a, of a facility that was quite large in an organization that is a global organization, nationally anyway. And I met with him and he said, that's not what I want. I said, okay, we're gonna fight, we're gonna win. So we went, redid the healthcare directive so he could live and have the medical care and whatever he wants in life. Well, they sent in six professionals, doctors, heads of the ethics committee, people that were in administration to try to convince him that he needed to just die. The man has still life in him. The family is still wanting to be with him. This is not his time. And somebody had to fight for him. So we fought. And I remember the last thing that happened a woman grabbed a piece of paper from me. She said, I'm going to copy it for our records. I said, to file it? She said, yes. But she took the original, went into my brother's room and shut the door behind her and said to him, do you trust this man that's trying to get you to sign that you could live and have medical care? And he said to her, this man is my brother. I've known him for over 70 years. He is the one that you're going to have to contend with because I am going to live and not die. It's time, my friend, for you to fight. It's time, my friend, for you to win. I get excited when I get a testimony like this and I shout it from the housetops because it takes conviction and it takes commitment and it takes carry through all the way to the end. So I'm charging and challenging you today. Do not quit. Take testimony of my brother. He's going to be giving a testimony shortly. You'll see it either on Daily Victory or here at Victory. We'll, we'll have him share his testimony. And it is a life-changing, joyful experience. Well, God bless you. I'm excited to be with you today. And now I'm going to say to you, I love you. And I can't wait to see you again. God bless.